right guys, in today's video we're going to go over all of the differences between the Vortec 4200 production and how to identify which motor is which and what parts you want out of that particular motor. So to start off we're going to go over the physical appearance of the motor. The 02 to 05 engine featured this plastic valve cover. That is the very first dead giveaway if you see a plastic valve cover, you know it's an O2 to O5 engine. Secondly, you will know it's an O2 if the harmonic damper is uh, one way, or you will know it's a O3 to O5 if it features a damper more similar to that one over there. So, the major change to these engines happened in O6. You will see this right here is an 06 engine. 06 engines feature an aluminum cam cover. Uh, that is a dead giveaway. Now, uh, there are some other minor changes, but we will go over them as uh, the video continues on. So, first we're going to start with ignition coils. From 02 to 05, they featured these heat sink ignition coils. As I call them, they have the heat sink on the top. Um, they're generally pretty decent ignition coils. We had them up to 430 horsepower on the dyno before we started to see ignition break up. And then in 06, they came out with these ignition coils. I have been told that the internals are physically identical to a LS coil. And we have had these up to uh, 450, roughly, horsepower on the dyno. No signs of any issues at all. Um, if you're going to go with a turbo application or a higher power build, I'd recommend going with these ignition coils. Next, let's talk about the cylinder heads. So, on your left, you will see uh, a 2005 cylinder head. And on your right, you will see a 2006 cylinder head. So, they had a major change in 2006. Uh, 2002 to 2005 featured these little tiny exhaust ports that you see here. And in 06, they revised the cylinder head, made the exhaust ports much larger, and uh, increased the exhaust flow pretty significantly. Additionally, you will see on the cylinder head that they went to larger valves. So this is a pretty big deal. This is actually the first time I've actually seen them next to one another. But you can see the massive difference in the exhaust valve. Um, clearly, the 06 and later head flows a lot more. Um, I believe they upsized both the intake and the exhaust valve size. Um, so that's that's a pretty big deal. And then uh, also they change. So you may see the aluminum valve cover and say, hey, I can weld on that. What if I installed that on my 02 to 05 engine? You know, in a case where you know you're dealing with hood clearance issues and you want to relocate the oil fill. Well, they changed the uh, bolt pattern of the cam cover. So this is the early one. It comes a little bit further forward um, and it has bolts in different locations. And then in 06, they went to this revised pattern. Um, so they do not interchange. That is something that um, I found out the hard way. I went to a junkyard, pulled a valve cover off an 06 engine because it was dealing with hood clearance issues. They wanted to relocate the oil fill and well, yeah, didn't go so well. Um, and then one other change that happened on top of the uh, cylinder head is they went to a larger intake cam on the uh, 06 engine. So this is an 05 cam. You can see the part number here. Is 3768. The part number for an 06 and later cam is 0133. So that is a, another dead giveaway. It's roughly, uh, um, 
I believe it's like 15 thousandths more uh, lobe lift. And then one last change on the uh, engines is they went from a, a straight valve spring to a beehive valve spring. So I don't think uh, you'll have too many issues with the valve springs. Um, I had thought that I was running into valve float issues on this engine, so I ended up upgrading to 2JZ valve springs. But uh, I think what I was feeling was I was not using the variable valve timing, and once you get that in the right spot, these engines make a lot more power. So I don't know uh, definitively if the valve springs in the 02 to 05 are good for boost or not, but um, what I can tell you is having the variable valve timing in the right spot makes a huge difference. Um, we have run the Beehive valve springs in the Fairmont up to 450 horsepower, um, 16 pounds of boost, and had no issues with uh, power production, no valve float issues that I'm aware of. Um, one other thing I'll mention while we're on the uh, uh, cylinder head is they had they changed the um, VVT actuator uh, pretty significantly um, between the 02 to 05 to the 06 and later. So the old actuator sticks out a bit further, and uh, it uses a spring and a uh, basically it's like a sprocket and a, uh, like a, a gear mesh pattern that is kind of cut at an angle, and that's how the thing changes phase. Whereas on the later engines, it's actually like a, uh, a, a cavity like this that fills with oil and changes the position in that way. You will notice that they don't exactly interchange. The uh, You'll notice the cam sensor does not line up. Yes, it slots into there, but once you have a camshaft in there, it will not go on. Um, but the camshaft position sensor is in the wrong spot. So let's talk about that while we're here. They had uh, two different patterns on the cam position sensor. Um, this is a seven, oh, it looks like a six tooth. <laughs> a six tooth uh, wheel on uh, the early engines, but they kept that from 06 to 07, and in 08, they went to a four tooth pattern that is more similar to the uh, LS series engines. So that is one other change. Moving on. So let's talk about the bottom end. So. These are a rod and a piston out of an 05 engine. You'll notice that it is a, uh, a rod that is very similar to like a Gen 4 LS, but the stem of the rod is a bit thinner. Um, it, but other than that, it looks very similar. You'll notice that they feature pop-up pistons. So this was to get the compression ratio higher. Um, the early engines feature a 10 to 1 compression ratio, um, but yeah, overall, a decent piston, um, pretty light stuff, so um, probably good for uh, high revs, um, but moving on, we have, uh, this is a rod and a piston out of an 06 engine. So right off the bat, you'll notice that there's this little step here. In 06, they added this little tiny hole here, which bleeds oil off of the rod bearing and squirts oil onto the piston to cool the piston. Um, this is the piston oil squirter. Um, and then they also increased the dome height to get the compression ratio up. So the later engines feature a 10.3 to 1 compression ratio. Additionally, something I want to point out is the rods. Here they are next to one another. Notice how much more meat there is on the 06 and later uh, rod. 
So this is something that um, you'll see like on an LSA rod, the supercharged LS. Um, you'll see a much larger small end of the rod. Undoubtedly, this is going to be stronger. Um, so the later rod is probably the one you want to go with. The only thing with that is they went to a different pin size. The early rod is a 905 pin, and this is like a 920-ish. I, I forget what the exact measurement on that was. Um, and with that, the piston actually is 50 grams heavier than the earlier piston, and the rod is a bit heavier. I don't have the cap for this, so I couldn't get an exact weight. But um, that's something to consider. Um, so there's uh, the difference there. So next let's talk about the crankshaft. So this is the crankshaft out of a 2005 engine. This is what is known as the 12 counterweight crankshaft. You will notice 12 counterweights throughout the crankshaft. Also you will notice that it features a 7 tooth reluctor wheel. This is cast into the crankshaft, so uh, converting to a different reluctor wheel would be uh, uh, involved machining. Um, certainly doable, but uh, you would probably have to bolt something to the harmonic damper. Not a huge deal. But in 2006, they changed the design on this crankshaft, and they omitted, I believe, these two counterweights. Yes, these two counterweights and these two counterweights. So the 06 and later is what is called the 8 counterweight crankshaft. The uh, 06 to 07 crankshaft had the same 7 tooth uh, reluctor wheel, but it had, uh, in, in 08 and 09, they had a 58 tooth much like the LS. Um, as you'll see, they used the computer from an LS as well, um, which is probably why they switched. So this is the crankshaft you want to go with. The uh, 12 counterweight crankshaft is supposedly more stable under higher RPM. So that's what most of the performance guys recommend you go with. Um, all that being said, the 06 and later crankshaft, we have had up to around 450 horsepower in the Fairmont no issues, um, and we'll probably keep pushing that, you know, see what happens. So the last thing I want to touch on is the differences in the ECUs. So in my hand here, um, this is the P10 ECU. This was on engines from 2002 to 2005, roughly. Um, these uh, ECUs did not have a mass airflow sensor. They're sort of basic. They take a really long time to flash to. I think it's like a seven minute flash on this guy. Generally, if you're going with like a turbo or a performance application, I don't recommend using this guy. So next, in 2006 and 2007, they went to the P12. That is what this guy is. Um, it featured a mass airflow sensor. And it also um, had the spark table in gram cylinders, uh, cylinder air mass on the y-axis. So this is generally considered the ECU to use for like a turbo application. Um, it allows you to rescale your um, spark table so that you can do um, timing, pull, and boost. Um, and it also has mass airflow, so you can give extra enrichment as the airflow of the engine increases. Um, so if you're going to do a stock ECU turbo build, this is the ECU you want. You want. In 2008, they went to the E67. This is the E67. You'll notice it looks very similar to the P12. The one difference is this plug is a little bit longer. So that is how you tell the difference. Um, this is probably not the right ECU. You'll know, you, you may recognize this ECU because it came on some LS engines. HP Tuners allows you to expand the fuel table and spark table 
on the V8, some of the V8 OS's. But on the six cylinder OS, you are stuck with one bar, and so you can't really do a whole lot with this ECU. Um, yes, it will run your 58 tooth engine, but if you want to go turbo, this isn't going to do it. So that was the last thing I wanted to talk about. I hope this kind of brings everyone up to speed on how to identify the differences throughout the years and kind of pick and choose which components you want uh, to do your build. So um, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.